you've been playing a lot with OBS. I've been playing a lot with it. A lot of people, I think, kind of have gravitated towards that software, which makes sense. It's free software. It's open source. Um, you know, and it's pretty well featured. We used to play with Wirecast back in the day, and it reminds yeah. me a lot of that. Wirecast, of course, is more on the professional broadcasting side of things, and we had a license at Mary Washington. Uh, but it's, gosh, what is it, $600 or something like expensive, that? I think I checked. Yeah. It's very expensive. And so unless your school already happens to have a license or whatever company you work with has a license and you're able to get it, it's not really, I think, manageable. So for a lot of people, I think they're going to be turning to OBS and more recently Streamlabs OBS, which was brand new to me. I'd played a little bit with the yeah. regular OBS, which is a well-known thing, but Streamlabs, I guess, is a fork of the software meant to be a more modern interface with options for like bringing in Twitch comments and YouTube streaming. It's, it's really meant for gamers, I think. But it's also just a, you know, a little bit of a cleaner interface, I think, with the same basic structure as OBS, which I guess stands for Open Broadcasting Software. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. So, yeah. Yeah, so let's, what I'll do is I'm going to share my screen here. And we can take a look at, this is Streamlabs OBS, and I figure that's probably the right one to show because anything you could do in regular OBS you can do in this and then maybe towards the end we can talk about some other software particularly um, there's a good mobile application that I can show as well on here um, for iPhones there might be an Android one too um, but basically the DS106 TV server is what's called an RTMP server and so any software that can stream to an RTMP endpoint works. Uh, OBS is a very popular one. And in fact, you know, if you think of third-party services, like if you go to do YouTube live streaming, they will give you an RTMP URL. If you go to do Facebook streaming, although they don't show it, you can look up and find that there's actual RTMP URLs. And so that's all this software is doing is it's taking everything and it's broadcasting to this endpoint. In our case, we're running our own server instead of relying on YouTube or Facebook or Twitch. Gets around having to deal with the copyright concerns and things like that. So, um, Which is beautiful. Yeah, exactly. So in Streamlabs, I guess let's look at the settings first and foremost, and then we'll get into like the actual designing of shots. So looking at the settings here and I don't know if I can make this bigger if it's if it's hard to see or not um, I can't make it any bigger but that's okay it's um, pretty clear actually yeah not too bad the no. general the general settings I don't really change much in here um, it's more personal preference you can go through and look through some of that stuff the stream of course has the RTMP URL like I was talking about that you're streaming yeah. to and then the and then a password essentially they call it a stream key and those are really the only two things you need in order to go live. So any software that says it supports RTMP streaming, you can put in that URL in the stream key and it should work, which is kind of nice. You've got a lot of flexibility there. If you're searching for apps for an iPad or for an Android device or for a laptop, that's the key is that you want to find things to do RTMP streaming. So there's even ways... And we can talk about some of this after we go through OBS. Like, you can play a video in VLC and stream that video that you're playing to an RTMP server. So you could start a movie on VLC and then say, now start broadcasting that on DS106 TV. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. But you can do a lot in OBS, too. Um, output settings... I keep this on simple. I haven't gotten into like way advanced stuff, but the the key things that I like to look for here is this video bitrate option because this is how much bandwidth you're going to consume when you're broadcasting. The higher this number, the better quality and the more bandwidth you're going to eat up. And that's where lag will come into play. You know, if you start dropping frames or you start lagging really bad, it may be that you don't have the bandwidth. And I know um, some folks who have tried to broadcast may have, you know, questionable internet or may, you know, 
they might be on a cell phone connection, that's a number that you can adjust in here. Um, so 2500 is what I've got it. That's somewhat of, I mean, that's an HD broadcast. I could dial that down to 2000 or to 1800 and I could start to to see now you obviously want to do some testing with that because you go too low you're going to look really blurry and choppy you know you're yeah. you're basically lowering the quality of your stream you can think of it like when you're watching a youtube video and you change the uh resolution of it you know it's it's the same idea you know you're going from an hd version to a you know a 720p or to 360 or whatever and you can see the actual size of the video doesn't change but it gets blurrier and that's the same idea in here video bit rate the higher it is the higher quality but the more bandwidth it's going to take um, they should have like dvd quality no blu-ray right dvd vhs <laughs> yeah and you know ep vhs yeah exactly um, the encoder, depending on the computer, so I'm using a software decoder because I have a MacBook Pro. It's not the greatest. It's, gosh, I mean, it's it's five years old at this point. So it doesn't have a great video card in it. So software encoding is the best that I can do. If you've got a PC with like an NVIDIA graphics card, there might be some hardware encoding options in there that might work really well. So test out some of that. Um, but Either way, the, the default should work. And OBS, when you first start it up, has sort of a getting started wizard where it will read some of the settings and try to set some of this. So you may find that some of this is already done for you, but it never hurts to kind of look it over again. You'll notice some of here, it gives some things about like the encoder. The higher this is, the less CPU it uses, which is good. Um, I have found, you know, even when I'm playing around, sometimes the CPU can go up dramatically on my laptop the fans start worrying things get slower that kind of stuff so um so i have this set to very fast you can go even ultra fast it goes all the way down to slower um and this is just about like how much encoding work it's having to do you know and it's all it's always a balance between the quality of the broadcast versus the speed and the everything else right so you know if you're broadcasting something that doesn't need to be high definition, you know, to the point of, you know, seeing the, the pores of the individuals like cheeks or something like that, dial things back down a little bit. You know, if you're just having a conversation with someone, for example, you could dial it down quite a bit. If you're doing a demo like this, that's where high quality probably makes more sense because you want to be able to read the individual words on the settings page here and that kind of stuff, too. So it just depends on what you're broadcasting. Uh, under recording, OBS can record a file at the same time that you're broadcasting, which is really useful. It is going to take more computing power, so again, be aware of that. Um, what I do like to change in here is make sure that MP4 is the recording format because I like it. MP4 is used pretty, pretty worldwide there. And then record quality, I do high quality but a medium file size. You've got a couple options here and some of them larger file size but higher quality and then lower and that kind of thing where you can do same as stream. Same as stream, we'll get into like what the size of the video is afterwards. But this is a nice medium I find. High quality, medium file size, MP4 is the type. Do you find, Tim, that, that OBS uh, labs no, Streamlabs OBS uses up a lot of CPU for your Mac. You know, I've only started playing with it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you know, when I've when I've been streaming, for the most part, I try to kill stuff that I'm not using. Yeah. I try to make sure, like, it's the only thing that I'm doing on there. Or maybe I have Twitter open, but that's about it. Otherwise, yeah. And, and I think it also gets into how much stuff is in your scene, too. So if I have, like... 20 different things going on in a scene then things start to get bogged down and depending on what you're trying to embed if you've got multiple screens that you're capturing windows from and stuff then yeah. it gets you know it's got to do a lot more work so everything i think you think of in terms of like how much work is the software having to do to do this right to record to stream to grab that window from that application and that window from that application and this browser and that kind of stuff so there's yeah, a balance totally. there as well but you know, I'm on a five-year-old laptop too, so I'm probably kind of pushing the limits there a little bit. <laughs> I'm in the same boat because we yeah. bought ours at the same time. And exactly. I'm starting to think like, oh, right. MacBook Pro now look newer. I didn't think I needed one until I started playing with this. But I'm like, oh, maybe I do. You've got a gaming PC though, so you could use I that, do. right? 
Oh, yeah, you so you could use that. Um, audio, <laughs> I leave the stuff the same here. 44.1 kilohertz in stereo is the sort of default. You can just leave all that stuff the same. Um, under video, this is really interesting. So you've got what's called a base canvas resolution, and that's sort of what your canvas that you're working with, what the resolution is. You typically want that to be the same size as your computer monitor or but it can be whatever, you know. I, I have changed that base resolution sometimes and I actually have this in the document to a four by three if I'm broadcasting and I want it to look really good inside the TV on the homepage of DS106 TV. Um, yeah. But in this case, I have it really high because I'm on a 4K monitor and I just want the base resolution to match up with my monitor. So I would do that if I'm planning, you know, to stream my monitor itself. But if I wanted to actually stream out something that's not 4K because I don't have, you know, an amazing computer with awesome bandwidth and everything, the output scaled resolution is important. So this actually says, okay, your canvas is gonna be 4K, but the output is gonna be a 720p broadcast. And so it's gonna output a 1280 by 720. So it's downscaling that to something before it sends it out to DS106 TV. So right. this second resolution here is what DS106 TV is receiving. The first one is your base canvas. That's what you're building off of. So it's totally fine for that first one to be pretty high. You don't want it to match mine if you don't have a 4K monitor because that's crazy. You know, typically, you know, for most people, 1920 by 1080 um, will work fine. It just yeah, play around with those. It depends on, you know, what laptop you're working with. Um, but you know, the output, I would say 720p is perfectly fine. That's still HD, but it's not like super crisp high quality. So it's going to take up less resources. Um, and then the downscale filter, you've got three different options here. You've got very fast, but it can be blurry when it's scaling. You've got a medium option and then you've got one where it scales using multiple samples and it's really high quality. So as it's scaling down, it's going to try and make sure that it maintains quality, but it also takes a lot of resources as well. So I just choose that middle option. Frames per second, high quality would be 60. Um, I'm not doing any kind of gaming. Uh, you know, now if I'm doing the pinball streaming, maybe, but even that is like, okay, I don't care too much. 30 frames per second should be totally fine for most streams. Um, so that's usually what I go with, but you could play around and see, can you get away with 60 frames per second? It's just going to add more frames into the stream, which of course is going to be higher quality. So I definitely would not go lower than 30 or else you're going to have like a, a weird looking stream. That's kind of it on the settings side of, a, oh gosh. And the other thing, well, we'll come back to remote control. I don't know if you've played with remote control in Streamlabs, but it's super cool. But we'll come back to Is that it? in we'll come back to that in just a second. Um, let's get into looking a little bit at OBS itself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> first thing more to note <laughs> on more the prizes, more more prizes. You want a VCR? Um, <laughs> on the left hand side here, you've got a couple different things. One of them is this editor. This allows you to choose what the layout of OBS actually looks like. So the default has like this mini feed, which feeds in comments from YouTube and stuff. DS106 TV doesn't have that, so I get rid of it. So you've got a couple layouts in the top left here, and you can see it's just sets of boxes and different kinds of layouts. And so this is the default one, and usually the mini feed is right here, I think. Yeah this is what it looks like and you've got audio mixer and so you can see you can just drag and drop things over um i don't need that many feeds so i actually like to have more stuff in here for like audio mixer i like on the right source selector in the middle and then where's my scene selector editor display i'm not seeing it on here legacy events oh, well i didn't save it so if you if you don't save it then when you go out here it won't save it but this is the layout that i like you've got oops not side by side you've got your preview up on the top here and then you've got the scenes on the left the sources in the middle and the mixer on the right very basic setup 
um, your scenes. So first thing to note is that let's say you're planning out a particular type of broadcast. You want to build out lots of different scenes and things and then maybe you get really excited and you want a second TV show. You don't have to delete everything or start fresh. You can have multiple scenes or sorry, you can have multiple sort of sets of scenes. So this drop down here, you can see I have this one called demo, which has nothing yet. But if I go in here, these are a couple of the different pinball machines that I've been playing with. So if I go to fishtails, it's going to open up that set. And these are all of my settings already set and ready to go. Now, it looks a little different up there because my base canvas size changed since I last broadcast this. So it's a little bit smaller when I first created this, but that allows me to get started right and running just with that particular game. So if I know what I'm broadcasting, I can just pop it up and ready to go. Um, you know, I can switch back here to demo or let's see, there's aliens. Now some of these, yeah. So this was the aliens pinball one that I did. So this is pretty cool. And this is the second window that I've got in there that it's capturing. Move Twitter out of the way here for a second. So that's got my window over here on the right hand side. I've got images up top so I can switch between any of those different scenes and I'm ready to go. So it's, n it's nice when you're building out a broadcast to choose a particular collection of scenes. And then within that, you can create individual multiple scenes in there. So one might be blackout, right? I always like to have one scene which has nothing. It's just black. You know, that's sort of like the, hey, nice to see you or whatever, fade out to black. Um, and then we'll have another one that's maybe full camera. So you're essentially creating shots, right, for your broadcast. So full camera now, I want to show my webcam full screen on here. And so I have to add a source in. That's where the sources come into play. So under sources up here at the top, you would add a new one and you've got a lot of different options here. And so this one is going to be a video capture device. And I like in Streamlabs OBS, it actually tells you what the various sources are with some examples, either a built-in webcam, Logitech webcam, capture cards, that kind of stuff. So you know what you're selecting there. So I'm going to add this in. You have to give it a name. So I'm going to say this is my webcam. doesn't matter what name you give it. And then you actually se select which webcam. So I'm going to choose that one and then you choose a resolution from a preset there. So I'll just keep those options, but it's got a couple different resolutions for that camera. Actually, let's go ahead and do high. Done. And then it pops it in there and I can resize that to be the size of my canvas. So that can be an entire scene is just full camera. And now I can switch back and forth like blackout, full camera, and I've got those in there. Say I want another one, and we'll call this uh, PC demo. And in this case, I might want like my computer full screen with like my video in the bottom left corner or something like that. So we're having, adding multiple sources, which is also super easy to do. Um, the first one would be your display capture. So I'm grabbing my entire monitor. So I'm going to say this is my computer display and you choose which display um, my second monitor is actually a vertical one because I've been playing a lot of pinball so I've got two screens but my second one is up and down so uh, it won't work too well for this particular broadcast but this first one I'll select in there and we got a little recursion <laughs> aspect going because that's what that looks like um, but that display is in there and then let's go and add another source, which is going to be my camera. So we know that's the video capture device. So I'll select that. And the first thing it does is it offers to let me choose one of the sources that I already set up before. And so you remember we just set up webcam, so that's already in there. And that's the one that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If I had a different one I needed, I would just say add a new source instead. And I would have to give it a name and I would have to pull it from the settings there. But in this case, we know webcam already exists, so I'm adding that in. And now I can grab the bars up top. I can resize that. I can put it down in the bottom left. So that's and what I should have done when Tommy was playing Geometry Dash. 
you totally could have done that because you already had the source for his webcam. You could have just yeah. added that in and done it. One thing to note on this is that your sources are in order by how they're arranged on your canvas. So the things on top are in front. The things on the bottom are in the back. Got it. So that can throw you off. If I went and dragged computer display above webcam, both sources are there, but you can't see my webcam because it's underneath of something that's taking up the entire page. So as you're building out your sources, just keep that in mind that in the order that their display on here is how they're going to be arranged on the canvas itself. So now I could switch between full camera and the demo and it's pretty awesome, right? So that is cool. So before, and I want to get into some of the other cool sources, but uh, really quickly too, on the audio side, you see the mixer over to the right. You can see my mic kind of activated over there. Anytime you add a source that has audio involved, another setting shows up under the mixer. So if you add a video that has audio, the video player is going to show up as a separate option in there. So you can turn the audio up or down. Levels wise, like most things, you just want to be mostly in the yellow. It can occasionally hit the red. If you're way off into the green, then you need to dial things up. So it allows you to keep track of that. So what do you mean when you when you say that there will be another audio? So when you add yeah. a video like the VLC, will that show up under the mixer as VLC audio or not? Exactly. So let's say, all right, so I'm going to do a computer demo, but then at some point I want to switch to a video that I have locally on my computer. So I'm going to create a video scene and the source that I'm going to add. And you can see sometimes on most of my shots, my mic is present. I don't have to add that as a source to every single scene. It's present across all of those, even in blackout, which is good to know, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. even when you're blacked out, people can hear you talking. So <laughs> just be aware of that. Um, but exactly. <laughs> if I go to create a video scene, so Let's go in here, and I'm actually going to choose, uh, where is it, VLC source. VLC source allows you to add a playlist of videos, and it can be just a single video, it doesn't matter, in there. And we'll call this uh, demo video. Nice. Question is, do I have any videos? Do we want to loop it? Appropriate for the no. last <laughs> Well, at all. I don't, I don't really save a lot of videos in here. Um, so we've got our playlist. Um, we have to add either files or a directory, and I can find it on here. Let me go. Let's just go to like my movies folder and see if there's something in there. These seem to be like some, oh yeah, it's like something from the uh, domains conference or something oh, like yeah. that. So Perfect. whatever that might be, who knows. Uh, so I'll add that in there. So. That's Sava and Chris. It is. It absolutely is. Um, yeah, so Crazy. audio track, subtitle track. There's no subtitles here, so I'll hit done. And you can see it automatically started playing. But look at the mixer now. Demo video is showing up in there, and it's got yeah. its own video track. Or sorry, its own audio track within there. So I can make this full scene. <laughs> but you can see it's super quiet, right? Like, so I know what's going out in the stream for that would not be very loud and i'd have to make some adjustments in there if i hit the gear icon and go to properties oh sorry those are just the settings for the um source i was thinking where's stream output projector i was thinking the properties would let me dial the audio up but it may be it's already turned up all the way there. Yeah, it's already dialed up. Where is it? This is what I was thinking about. Yeah. So I got to this. This is actually the gear next to mixer up at the top right. Got it. If I hit that, check this out. So all of my audio inputs are showing up there. I've got my demo video, my mic, everything that shows up in the mixer. But I can actually go up. Oh, does it let me go up higher than? Oh, it's not letting me. I was thinking you could go higher than 100. I guess not. Like it would go over on that. But one thing that's useful here, of course, I'm on a Yeti mic, and so I've got monitoring built in because my headphones are plugged into it. If you don't, you could actually turn monitoring on 
to the microphone that you're using if you've got headphones plugged in. Obviously, you don't want to cause a feedback loop, but then you can hear yourself talking, which is kind of nice too. So, yeah. or I might have the demo video playing and I also want to be able to monitor it so we're and not hearing that audio because we're not getting your desktop audio? You're, you're not um, because it wasn't going through my headphones, but now it is. You're, you're not getting it because it's, it's coming directly into my headphones, but I was able to hear it as soon as I switched monitoring on on that video. So just uh, something to be aware of. It would have been going out on the stream, but I also want to monitor it in my headphones too. So Now, I don't want to get too caught up in the audio piece, yeah. but like... Do you have problems getting your desktop audio to play? Are you using like a virtual? Uh, I haven't been device? playing around with that that setting on it because I use loopback and other things. So if you so use you just a, pull it into loopback, I've just been doing loopback for that. Yeah, exactly. So let's say you know I'm doing my PC demo and I want the audio from the desktop to come in uh, because I mean I can give an example. So let me open up Chrome. And we'll go to YouTube and start playing a video. Ideally, they have desktop audio showing there, but I have yet to see that activate. So if we go here, I can hear it in my headphones, but it's not showing up in the levels there. So I use loopback for that. I'll hide that screen oh. here. And and so I've got one the shadow add here, notes. Chrome. Ah, yeah. And I don't need to monitor it in my headphone. Well, yes, I do. Because it's going to mute it while capturing. Let me turn it on. That's that yeah. video that's playing. So we've got activity there. And you know it's going. So now I'm going to add audio input capture because loopback shows up as a microphone ah. so it's an audio input here beautiful and so that one that i called it obs shows up as a device and as soon as i add that now yeah. under my mixer loopback shows up and i've got the audio coming in there so now that video's audio would be showing up in the stream as well and i can monitor beautiful the audio there That's too that's awesome. Uh, all right. <laughs> Sorry, I've got the video still playing in my headphones here. <laughs> Justin Timberlake eating hot wings. It's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, so loopback shows up as a microphone. And so it's an audio uh, input device. Input, audio input capture source is what you would want there. You're basically adding a second microphone. But the essential idea there with audio is that any source you add that has audio associated becomes a line under the mixer that you can adjust. Yep. So, so let's go to some advanced tips. That's sort of an overview of how to start building out scenes. And there's a lot of different sources, but some of those interesting sources will come in with some of the tips that I found. And there's some really cool stuff. One of them is the ability to use your phone to switch between different scenes and settings and go live all from your phone as a touchpad. So that's this idea of remote control. I know it sounds crazy. So, um, and actually, even before that, there was something I was talking to you about, about how to get your phone to show up as yeah. a source in here. Um, it's not a default feature of OBS. It does require a piece of software called Aircast or sorry, Air Server, um, and it's unfortunately not free, but I had a license for it. So Air Server lets you essentially use your computer as a um, AirPlay server device. So, so when you go to mirror your uh, phone, it will show your laptop as the ability to mirror it to. It's great for presentations if you need to show your iPad or your phone on you know and you've got your laptop plugged into the presenter stuff and it's showing up on the projector but now you want what's on your phone to show up there too so oh, i've is got there a server for the phone or is it for your computer air servers for the computer it sets got up it. your computer as a server so if i had started in here it just adds something to my menu bar up here um it's i've already got it configured yes. in here but now if i go to mirroring 
on my phone, you just swipe up from the bottom and choose screen mirroring. You know, normally the only thing that would show up there would be um, a Apple TV or something, for example, for AirPlay. I see Tim's laptop there. It thinks Tim's laptop is an Apple, an Apple TV. TV. So if I choose that, this box pops up and says, are you going to allow this? I added that setting in because I didn't want anybody to just be able to stream to it. But I say allow. And that's my phone. Yeah. So now I've got a window with my phone. Oops. Go back here. So I've got this full screen. Andy Rush would be proud. I just want to say that. Yeah, so let me move this over to another screen. So imagine now, all right, so let's create a scene that's uh, phone demo, right? Yeah. 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 Now we're cooking with gas. So in my phone, I want, or sorry, in this scene, I want to have my video here on the left. Yes. And then I want to add a live version of my uh, phone. So I'm going to go to window capture because it, this is just an application running now. Yes. So I don't need the whole display. I just need that particular window. And I'm going to say, you know, Tim's phone, Tim's phone, Tim's iPhone. We got to be particular right. there. Yeah. <laughs> no, <know>. Android. <laughs> uh, the so list of using Linux, the list of windows shows you all the windows you have open. And so air server shows up as an option there. And so now I can, you know, I can make a nice little design cool. here. But look, this is live. If I swipe through, I can open up applications on here. I can open up Twitter on here. And so I can you have demo. Angry Birds? I don't have Angry Birds. Let's see, on the, <laughs> on the uh, game front, I, I have a very, you want to see the most ridiculous game I have on here? I do, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I have a game that's called Just Mowing. And all you do is mow lawns. Uh, it's, it's a, a Rowan Peter game. Isn't this great? Um, this is this is literally the entire purpose of the game is that you just go here and you mow the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's all That's there is. Absurd. It's the entire game. Um, yeah, you know, and and you up. Awesome. There's ridiculous upgrades like getting new engines for your lawn mower and that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's just mowing. I but, love it. Yeah, so Air Server is pretty cool in that regard in terms of showing exactly what's on the screen. Now, it did just crash for me, so I don't know Sorry. why it's doing that necessarily. But the reason I wanted to show you that, let me see if I can get it back up. No more mowing. No more uh, mowing we've, got, we've got more important things here. I'm going to pop this back open Stop again. Stop mowing on the broadcast. Yeah. Rowan. <laughs> Chorecast. All right. It's a Chorecast on DS106 TV. So if you go to the App Store, um, and there may be one for Android too, so just be aware of that. If you look for Streamlabs. But it's not going to be as easy. So there's an app there called Streamlabs Deck. Yes. And so I've already downloaded it. Um, I'm going to open that up. And you have a couple options in here. You can log into Streamlabs. You don't have to. Um, I'm going to skip through all of that and cross everything else. At the very bottom left of that, it says remote. So I'm going to go to remote in here. Now, this is already configured for my laptop. So look on here, right in the middle of my phone. You see that the scenes that I created just now during this demo show up as buttons in here. So if I full click camera. on, so if yeah. I tap on blackout or full camera, so I'm just tapping on my phone itself, and That's it's switching awesome. to PC demo. Here's my video scene, and now we're playing the video, and there's my phone demo back. And so you can use your phone or an iPad if you want a bigger screen as a switcher for OBS. Yeah, isn't that amazing? It's really super cool. Cool. The way you configure that. Um, is you have to go into the uh, OBS settings, Streamlabs OBS settings, and there's remote control at the very bottom. And it actually, I'm not going to show this one because the code is very particular to your laptop, so it actually blurs it out, helpfully, if you're showing someone else how to do it. Um, yeah. That QR code, the first time you go to the remote control on the app, it will 
it'll ask you to scan the QR code. You scan that QR code and now it's connected. And that's and all so it takes. Do you have to log into the Streamlabs thing on the app or no. you just use that you can hit you, you can hit skip uh, at the bottom nice. when it asks you to log in. You just hit skip and then go to remote in the bottom left. And that's the only thing I'm using the the phone for. But you know, you've got go live, you've got start recording. So I'll hit start recording on there. And you can that's see now in the sick. bottom right of OBS, it's recording this video now of me demoing this, which is, I mean, it's super cool. I hit end recording. Uh, and then I've got all of my various stuff in there, the, the scenes can switch between them. So I just think like, that's a really cool thing. If you're not using your phone during the stream for anything else, make that what you use to, yeah, as a switcher. And it just but makes it easier than clicking. even if you want to show off pictures and videos on your phone. Exactly. Yeah. Like I have a video of Tommy playing, you know, what is it? Uh, what's that one where you're doing this thing with the VR? Oh, Beat Saber. Yeah, yeah. Beat Saber. Mm -hmm. And he just took it and it's like, oh, I'd love to share it, but I got to put it up to my computer and all that. Now Damn. I will Now I will say I, I haven't had as much luck with Air Server with the audio coming through. So that might be something to play with. And of course, frame rates with AirPlay and all that kind of stuff you want to play around with a little bit. Um, but for, for demoing apps and stuff, it's great for the remote options. It's really cool. So Air Are Server does have me? a lot of uses. I'm never limiting you. <laughs> never. <laughs> Is there a limiting right now going on? Um, some other tips that I have are this is a fairly new one this is actually pretty cool let me go back to one of my other scenes it was i guess fish no it was aliens let me switch over to aliens sorry i love the way you have those different setups isn't that great For so pinball is awesome yeah, so I can just you know, open up the pinball on the on the other screen. So this is really cool. Of course, these are just images above me and then my camera and then my screen over here. But look in the bottom right hand side of my thing. You see that little TV? Yeah. This is a live count of how many people are watching us right now on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> so this is using uh, a couple of different things. One of them is that I wrote a script that calls the API for the media server and gets a dynamic list of how many people are watching. Uh, awesome. That is going to a website, ds106.tv slash uh, viewers.html. And that shows the little TV with a live count of the number of viewers in it. And then that is showing up as a source. And there's even, it's a transparent background and all that. Um, one of the source options that you have is called a browser source. It lets you put in a URL and then it embeds that website as a source and it's updated in real time so that's so cool isn't that amazing so i i changed the width and height to 300 for both because it's just a small part of that overall url anybody who goes to that url will see how many people we have with the tv and everything but yeah. making it a source allows that to update as new people start watching and that and, and it's embedded directly into the stream so you can do the the browser source is really interesting. You could add in if I switch over. Let's go back to my demo here. And let's say with this blank one, I'm going to go back here and add a new source. And uh, where is it? Browser source is my option here. It says you can add in websites, third party widgets, even HTML. So you go into add it in, you have to give it a name. I'll just keep the name browser source in here. And so you give it a URL and then you choose how large you want it to be. And it can pull in the audio from the website as well. How many frames per second you need, depending on what you're showing. Um, or you can choose a local file, which is really interesting. So say, for example, you have a bit of embed code and you want to embed it. All you have to do is open up a text document, drop the embed code in there and save it as an HTML file on your desktop and then pull it up here. So I'm going to go to local file and hit browse. And I've got one on my desktop, which is actually like a widget that I grabbed off of a site. What? So now this is a widget being pulled dynamically from a website embedded in here. Um, and this is just, you know, just keep in mind, 
so you can see this is what the test.html, if I open it with a um, text editor, Need to open it with uh, an actual editor, BB Edit. Yeah, so this is the text itself. It's uh, Voyant Tools. Um, some something that I found. They had a little iframe with some stuff in there, or whatever. But this is just a very basic HTML export. I dropped it into a file, saved it as test.html, but then I brought it in as that browser source. And this is dynamic. It's pulling in in real time. And on top of that. If I right click it, there's a button to interact. And now it pulls up in a separate window. But now as I move over it, this is actually in real time interacting with that widget. <laughs> that is so cool. So if you think about interacting with websites, it doesn't always have to be sharing your window. You can actually pull in a browser directly into a stream and do stuff, which is kind of cool. I dig that. So you're basically pulling in embed codes mm -hmm. from a website, but you're saving them as, as HTML files on your desktop. But that's exactly. The source. Yeah. And so you could do Twitter widgets. You know, you could do any kind of widgets that you find, weather, whatever the case may be, any, any HTML embed codes you could save and then pull into your stream. And those would just update while you're doing stuff, right? So, so you're pulling in so for like the Twitter like feeds of DS106 TV, you're pulling in a widget. I'm not actually. Um, I'm using something else. Or you could? You could, but that's not, uh, wow. We had a little bit of internet issue. Can you hear me now? It was delayed yeah. first. It was delayed for a second. Um, you could do it that way. I found a website and that actually brings me to the last tip that I have because I've done a ton of talking, but I did have this one other thing that I found about how to bring in live tweets on a stream that looks pretty cool. So I'm going to delete this one and I'll actually go back. Let's go back to my aliens one because that one was fully fleshed out in here. So one of the sources in here is called tweets. Oh, we have four people watching now. How about that? Um, that's and, crazy. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's yeah, kind of nice. It, it's cool. cool to know like how many people are watching, right? So yeah. then if you say nobody's watching, there's always someone watching, right? <laughs> uh, but if I open up tweets, you'll see that this is just pulling in a URL at a particular size. But it's this website I found, and it's tweetalerts.tv. And so I'll go there and give you a sense of what this looks like in terms of configuring it. The first thing it has you do is log in. You have to be authenticated with their website in order to configure it. You authenticate and then you get to choose uh, some design options for how these actually end up looking like on your stream. You can have a particular mp3 file play every time there's a new tweet. Uh, there's a light and a dark setting in there. You can choose the different colors. So there's a lot of options for how it looks, right? You can even choose whether or not to show their watermark or or whatever um, and all that. And then you go here under Tweet Alerts and you can say Automatic. And so this is monitoring hashtag DS106TV. And so anytime a new tweet uses that hashtag, it will pop up. And then you just take this, you go to the Tweet Wall overlay and you take that URL and you paste it into the browser source here. Yeah, exactly. and it and it will automatically work. So by default, it doesn't show anything. The, that overlay is just empty. But as soon as somebody tweets with hashtag DS106 TV, that tweet pops up. And so you can test it. If I go back yeah. to my window, oh, go to Google Chrome in here. Under this design overlay, they have this sample tweet text. And so I could say, without having to actually tweet out to test, you could say this is a test for Jim Groom. Okay, let me close this out. And then I can just hit try for the enter beside that. If I go back here, 
Now that didn't go out on Twitter, but it will show up in the stream ah. because it's being sent to that URL as a test tweet. So it allows you to resize things, make sure things look right and everything. But that right now, if somebody was to use, likes. yeah, it's, right. it's a very popular tweet. Um, but yeah, if anybody uses the hashtag, those will pop up there as well. You can choose how many. If you want a whole stream, you could do like five, and they could go all down the left-hand side. You can do that as well. The only thing that I haven't figured out is I didn't see any settings for it to go away after time, um, you know, which uh. it would be kind of nice to do that. Um, this says auto leave after eight seconds, but I haven't found that that's actually working. Uh, they just seem to stay there. So... Um, that's one thing to know <laughs> that if one person tweets you that's sitting on your stream the entire, time. the entire time but you can also hide individual sources so if you hit that eyeball icon next to a particular source all the tweets wow. are gone now so you know something shows up you didn't want it to show up you could just hide everything you know and that might be able to, to do it and then if you unhide it um it's gone now because every time it pulls from the source it starts with nothing and then it waits for those new tweets to show up so tweet that alerts is cool tweet alerts tv is it's a pretty cool way of doing that so i was excited to find that as well so oh, that's all the tips that i have for obs um so oh, let's I, let's do a re oh yeah you got another one let's go well Come the on, only baby. the only other thing i was going to mention was streaming from a phone right so we had yeah. talked about that um and the app that i use for it so again oops, as i knock into my microphone let me screen share my phone again yes i'll just <laughs> i'll keep with my aliens theme right so. i love it when you're pulling it off your one screen and onto <laughs> the other and it's going on to the background it's so cool so if i go into the app store and i do a search for rtmp You'll see there's there's a bunch of apps in here that support RTMP streaming. Um, this one called Live Now, uh, and you'll see it says RTMP streaming to YouTube, uh, but it's not limited to YouTube, which is kind of nice. Um, so this is the app. I see, a air server is going to crash on me again. Um, yeah, there we go. It was just taking a second to pop up in there. It's called Live Now Live Stream. Um, and it's a free application. It doesn't cost anything. Um, you know, I haven't even found if there's particular settings that cost money. I'm not sure, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. If I can go here, let me find where it is. Yeah, Air Server has been buggier recently. I'm not sure what, what the deal is there. Did it crash on you? Just it now? did crash on me again. So when but, you do when you do it live now, do you let it access your camera? I imagine yes. Right? That's right. Yeah, your camera and your microphone you want it to have access to so it can broadcast those back out. Uh, but then it's really straightforward. I, I don't even really even need to show you because it's asking for the server URL, the stream yeah. name and key in the URL. So those first two boxes are the only required ones, and it's the same settings as every other piece of software. So yeah. <clears throat> you put those in and hit go live, and you're streaming from your phone to DS106 TV. So very easy, quick way, and it'll save those settings as well. So very quick and easy way to pop your phone open, start streaming. Yeah, if you're going for a walk or something, so for those mobile casting moments, um, or you like just- Like Justin TV. Exactly, same idea. So wow. very simple and easy to do. Obviously, you're not going to create scenes and shots and all kinds of random stuff in yeah. there. Uh, but for mobile casting, really useful. But now let me ask you on that same on that same uh, thought. Tommy's playing on his iPad Geometry Dash or some game, and we want to mm -hmm. stream that as a source to OBS Streamlabs. Is that where you use Air Server? The That's where I would use Air Server. Yeah, exactly. Server, so you would yeah. mirror the screen to air server and now you've got a window that you can bring into the stream got it yeah and uh and the live stream is just like when you and andy did that one when they had that whole eagle nation 
That's thing, right. and yeah. someone went out with the phone, and then we had the. the I remember main that thing back absolutely. Home. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's I just mean, like 2011, baby. I know, right? Exactly. The other way that you could do it, but it, it definitely gets way more involved and expensive with an with an iPad or an iPhone or any HDMI devices. If you have an HDMI capture card that does that, you can bring an HDMI feed into. Then you would use an adapter on the iPad that goes HDMI out. It would be the same as connecting it to a projector, but you're connecting it to a capture card, and now it shows up as another display you know to capture within mm. the source that's probably the cleanest because there's no network involved at all um but it you need a capture card which gets expensive so um elgato no, is a very this. popular brand for that you know there's a couple others too i know joe mcmahon was streaming some gaming he was doing on his xbox that's how he was doing it was it was going hdmi out to elgato and into his computer and that's how he was able to play Xbox and show it on a stream. Interesting. So yeah. Elgato can do that. Yeah. And and Elgato, Elgato and many of these other ones that are out there will split the HDMI stream so you can still show it on a TV or a monitor, but then also have another HDMI that goes to the computer itself. And that way you're able to then pull that into a stream. So what camera... Now, now I noticed that you weren't using your your laptop camera what camera are you using it's a good question i am using the logitech c922 pro so it's a 1080p webcam it's not like 4k or anything crazy logitech i think makes great webcams and so the c series webcams are really good for that um yeah there's a couple different models out there and i'm sure they come out with new ones every year so i don't know what the best one is um, I've had this one for a while. It's C922. So, C922. Yeah. And that's just the one you put on your screen or around that's right. that, and that gets you. You don't do anything with your with your laptop. I mean, it, uh, when I'm connected to monitors and things, no, because I usually keep it closed. So right. I don't use much for, uh, with my laptop webcam because I keep everything closed and it's all connected to the monitors, keyboard, and mouse. And so. for your for your Mac, is that Thunderbolt that you're using? Is that what uh, no? This to? is a USB webcam. USB. Yep. Yeah. So the Logitech webcam, the Yeti mic, um, and that's kind of it. So really, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah. What, the, one, any, the, the one we have in the office is a Logitech too, but I think it's 4K, and it's also I think a C series one, but it's a 4K. Um, I think as you get into the really high resolution ones, it's still USB, but you have to have like USB three or even sometimes USB C. Um, yeah. So you know it's something to be aware of too. If you go too high resolution, you got to make sure that your ports support it, like you're saying, like Thunderbolt or something. But I think for the yeah. webcams, it's still USB, but it's got to be a newer USB port to support the the high bandwidth that those higher resolutions come in at. Yeah. Well, this has been super useful. I'm going to, cool. I'm going to like dig into Streamlabs. I appreciate yeah. you doing this because now I feel like between the browser sources, mm -hmm. knowing with air server, I can bring the iPad in and then also just the whole black and scenes and the switching, not only mention the remote control. That's mm -hmm. sick. Yeah. There's, there's lots of cool stuff in those sources. And as I got started to play around, especially with the, like you said, with the browser source and oh. different displays, um, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. So I'm excited to play more with it. And it's been cool to see other people play around too. So I'm hopeful yeah. that, you know, as people dial in these settings, you know, it, it can be a little bit burdensome to get the software in the settings, but like DS106 radio, once you've got it, you hit go live and you it. go, right? So it becomes yeah. way, way more fluid once all that stuff is saved in there and you can just jump online and play around for a little bit. So yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. That's cool, Tim. And I like cool. Streamlabs a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's slick. Yeah. I like the old school OBS too, but it definitely, this puts a little coat of polish on it too, which is kind of nice. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I wanted my next stream, I'm going to test out recording it as well and see if that hoses my computer down or what. We'll yeah. see. So I'm, I'm interested to see if I can record and stream at the same time without it just completely falling apart. So. Yeah. You might have to get the, what do they call it? The Mac Pro. <laughs> the trash can. Yeah. The trash can. R2D2. That's right. Or what do they say? If you could do a fully spec'd out one, it's like $50,000 or something. <laughs> yeah. The machines no, like a... that never get used. Yeah, seems. exactly. 
like a supercomputer beside my desk. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is good. I'm going to um, save this recording. I'll probably split up the karaoke conversation and the yeah. other one. And I'm planning on the OBS side, putting that on the how to document. So if people do want to watch a full on guide on getting started, I think this will be a good one for folks. So it's been useful for me and hopefully for others too. both people tuning in live as well as people who watch it after the fact. So yeah, appreciate it. So, all right. Smash that like button. That's right. Like and subscribe for more. <laughs>